Welcome again. We're reading through Luke, and right now we're in the 16th chapter. We're in a passage of Scripture from verses 14 to verse 17. And this is a passage of Scripture that a lot of Christians overlook. God's law cannot be changed. Verse 14, the Pharisees, who were lovers of money, also heard all these things. Now remember, we just came back from uh, talking about how Jesus said that you can't serve two gods, you can't serve two masters, you can't serve both God and money, that you have to serve only one master. You can't serve God and money. And so the Pharisees, it says here, were lovers of money. And let's continue reading here. The Pharisees who were lovers of money also heard these things and they scoffed at him. And this is what happens a lot of times when you preach against sin, especially with, you know, when somebody is hearing what you're saying and you're preaching against sin, the sin that they love so much, they, they'll scoff at you. They'll mock you. They'll, they will shoot back at you because they have a love in their heart, a love for sin, which we know that God hates. God hates sin. Verse 15. He said to them, that's Jesus, you are those who justify yourselves in the sight of men, but God knows your hearts. Now let me stop here for a second. I know a lot of Christians today say, oh God, don't judge me, don't judge me. God knows my heart. God knows my heart. But if you look at in this context, Jesus is not going to say anything pretty about the hearts of men. We know even in Jeremiah, in the book of Jeremiah, it says that the heart, the hearts of human beings are desperately wicked. It says, God knows your heart, that your heart is desperately wicked. And I always think about that when people say to me, oh, God knows my heart. Yeah, God knows your heart, all right. And if you are in sin, if you're a sinner, if you're not totally dedicated to God, 100% sold out and dead to yourself and alive to God, you have a heart that's desperately wicked. So let's continue. Jesus said, again, you are those who justify yourselves in the sight of men, but God knows your hearts. For that which is exalted among men is an abomination in the sight of God. Wow. Let's stop here for a second again. There are a lot of things in this world that are exalted among men. What does that mean, exalted among men? It means everybody likes it. Everybody loves this person. Everybody loves that person. Everybody is into this. Everybody is into that. Everybody loves this gadget. Everybody loves this device. Everybody loves this celebrity. Everybody loves this song. Everybody loves this movie. Everybody loves, you know, these sports players. Oh, it's, everybody just praises it to the, to the heavens. It's exalted. For that which is exalted among men is an abomination in the sight of God. One thing you have to settle within your heart when you become a Christian is that is the things that are dear to the world are hated of God. God is in to total opposition to the, to the world system. God is in total opposition to the majority. You got you to gotta settle that within your heart. You got to settle that before you go anywhere with God. If you're going to be a good person in the, in the sight of God, you're not going to be such a good person in the sight of men. If you're going to be pleasing to God, you're going to be very, uh, you're going to be quite a provoking person or a person that would cause a lot of anger to the world. Jesus did. The apostles did. The prophets did. Let's continue. Jesus said in verse 16, the law and the prophets were until John. From that time, the good news or the gospel of God's kingdom is preached. And everyone is forcing his way into it. Everybody wants to get into the kingdom of God. But it is easier for heaven and earth to pass away than for one tiny stroke of a pen in the law to fail. Very, very powerful thing. 
And this is what a lot of Christians miss because they say, well, you know, we don't go by the law no more. The law is abolished. The law is done away with. Jesus fulfilled the law. Listen, my friend, you have no idea what you're talking about. When you say Jesus fulfilled the law, we've got to remember Jesus was a 100% purebred Jew. And if you ask any Jewish person today who is law observant, Torah observant, orthodox at that, if you say, do you fulfill the Torah? Do you fulfill the mitzvot? The mitzvot being the commandments of God? Do you fulfill them? Do you fulfill all the commandments of God, all that God requires of you? Any observant Jew, any Orthodox Jew today, the practicing Orthodox Jew today would say, yes, I fulfill it. The word fulfill means to obey, means to follow, means to observe. If you look actually in the Greek lexicon, Thayer's le Greek lexicon to be exact, in Matthew chapter 5, and um, you know, he also, Jesus also spoke about, you know, I don't come to abolish the law, but I've come to fulfill it. The word fulfill there, if you look in Thayer's Greek lexicon, you see that it means to cause God's law to be obeyed as it should be. It's easier for all of heaven and all of earth to pass away than it is for one of the smallest of the pen marks of the Torah to pass away. That's what Jesus said. That's a very, very strong statement in favor of the eternal Torah. That is a very strong statement in favor of God's eternal law that has never been abolished. Jesus died so that you could repent. Jesus died and rose again so that you could live in newness of life and walk in, the, in, in line with God's law. Not be a lawbreaker, not be a lawless, you know, worker of iniquity. No, to be a saint. That's God's will. That's Jesus' will. So as you go your way, remember, when you read the, the scriptures, you read God's law in what a lot of Christians would call the Old Testament. But as you read it, remember, Psalm 119 says that the word of God is forever settled in heaven. The word of God is the law of God, is the commandments of God. The commandments are the, are, are the word of God. All of the commandments are the word of God. They are forever settled in heaven. Not temporarily until the Messiah comes and then, the, then, they, then it, God just changes everything and throws out his eternal word. Just changes his mind. Changes his character. No, that's Martianism. That's heresy. God's word is eternal. And Jesus came to specifically nail that to the floor. It's eternal. His law is eternal. It's easier for all of heaven and all of earth to disappear than it is for even one little smallest little piece, one little smallest little yud or tag of the Torah to pass away. As you go your way, remember, God's word is eternal. His law is eternal. And he expects you to obey it to the best of your ability. In the name of Yeshua. Thank you.